Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina Kent and I'm an oil painter based out of San Francisco. And today I'm going to walk you through the process of painting the beautiful San Francisco cityscape. Let's check it out. So this painting is on a cradled wood panel that I toned with a light layer of raw umber and I just put in, I didn't do an actual full underpainting for this one. Instead, I just very lightly marked in where some of the darkest darks were with some of the dark purple for things in the background and then sort of a dark brown for things that were more in the foreground. And then as I'm going through the painting, as I'm starting to block in the colors, so I'm putting in like the broad shapes of color that I'm seeing, I start out by doing the things that are furthest in the background first and then I'll move on to the middle ground and then go to the foreground. And in this image it was really interesting in the reference photo um, there was kind of this weird layer of clouds that was in the sky and and so it's kind of creates this cool layering in the background. We have that sort of um, like a dark lavender color at the top of the sky and then we have the orange sunlight in the middle and then we have of course the blue clouds um, or not the blue clouds but the blue mountains um, and the other side of the bay right below that orange part and I really liked that blue orange contrast between the sky and the mountains in the far distance and then as we're coming forward into the middle ground we have one of those classic upward facing San Francisco streets which I love to paint so much I just think there's something so like happy and like whimsical about the fact that the city is just on all of these hills and so I really love to capture that in the paintings and it really gives it, it almost gives the cityscape this sense of like the land and the landscape underneath it which I really enjoy so for the middle ground I was keeping a lot of um, those kind of lavender tones for the gray concrete buildings um, but then also kind of bringing in some warmer tones too and then we have these two buildings that are in the foreground so this is actually the view from Lombard Street which is a really really steep street itself and so we have the two houses that we're closest to but then the street goes down really quickly so you don't see any other houses in the foreground and I kind of liked that extreme contrast between these houses that we see really well and really clearly and then all of a sudden we are sort of transported to the houses in the middle ground where we can't really make out details and definition. So for the houses in the foreground, I'm uh, refining the details on those houses and I'm bringing out some of the highlights, some of the crisp forms and edges and giving a sense of those classic San Francisco Bay windows. Um, and then I'm gonna keep the details really light in, in the rest of the image to give us that sense of depth and that sense of atmosphere. And at this point I've blocked in basically all the colors so I, I kind of have an idea of where the painting is going and I like the color relationships that I'm seeing. We're getting this really nice effect of the clouds over the buildings but then we have that bright sunlight that's peeking through below that layer of clouds. And so I, I go in now and I start to emphasize that brightness by adding some more highlights, bringing in some lighter and lighter colors. And I do this a lot when I'm oil painting, especially when I'm doing a la prima painting, which is when I'm painting wet paint onto wet paint, um, is that usually if I have an area that has a lot of lights, I'll start out with it being a little bit darker first, and then I'll start to build up the highlights on top of those darker colors because oftentimes it's um, if you're doing wet on wet painting you can easily layer a light color on a darker color but it's harder to go the other way around so and I, and I also like that sense of building up the lights where the lights almost have this like physicality to them as they're sitting on top of the darker colors and also as I'm working on the background and, and working on the middle ground, um, I'm kind of keeping in mind how my edges are and whether or not there are soft edges or hard edges between shapes. I lightly sweep the brush over the paint to blur certain edges and then other edges I'll make a little bit crisper. So I, I do like to have a lot of variation, even if it's something in the background or middle ground where the details do tend to be a little bit fuzzier. 
And then here, I'm also going in and adding some more detail to the middle ground. So as you can see, I had that layer of kind of darker purple that fades to brown. And then on top of that, like I said, I'm kind of building up these lights. I'm bringing out some of the highlighted parts to suggest the shape of all of these mostly concrete buildings in the distance. Um, and here I think is like one of the part where cityscapes can be really intimidating because there is just so much detail and it can be so hard to simplify that into just the shapes that are just enough to give people the, sens the sensation of the cityscape because I don't want to draw every last detail and every last rooftop. I mean, that would be, it would be really tedious and I think um, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't make for a beautiful painting. I, I mean, if I wanted to show everything, then I can just take a photograph. So I instead want to suggest the idea of all these buildings and rooftops without, um, without drawing every single one. And so I try to just vary the shapes that I'm using to make these, these rooftops and these building shapes when I'm doing the middle ground. And once I've gotten the middle ground kind of built up with more detail, then I move on to the foreground again. So I go in and I refine the shapes of these houses that we're seeing right in the foreground. In my block in, um, I laid in the colors and I was pretty happy with them, but my shapes weren't very precise. And one of the things about like painting buildings and cityscapes is that I do like to have um, the lines be pretty sharp, pretty straight. I'm not um, super obsessive about this. I don't use a ruler or anything, but I do like to have some nice crisp lines and edges. And I generally don't worry about that in the block-in. In the block-in, I'm more concerned about getting the color relationships and value relationships right. But now as I'm going in and refining the details, I can really start to bring out those sharpness in the shapes. And then that's really also going to draw the eye into the image. I think really sharp delineated shapes um, attract the eye and and give us something to kind of focus on, especially when the middle ground and the background have so many hazy shapes and, sh and softer edges. I think it can be nice to have that variation and to have that sharpness in the foreground. And then of course it also helps increase the sense of atmospheric perspective if we have more sharp edges in the foreground and then more softness in the background. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with how everything is working together. I mostly just go in and add some of the finishing touches, refining some of the highlights and also finding places where maybe I want to add some extra highlights. I often find that as I resolve one part of the painting, then I'll notice things about another part of the painting that I want to change. So for example, as I was bringing out a lot of these sharper highlights in the foreground, I also noticed that um, the middle ground was looking a little flatter than I wanted it to. So I decided to add a bit more highlights to the middle ground as well, just to bring, bring about a bit more definition into those shapes. But as you can see, I, I don't go too, too much into detail here, and I do still try to keep the middle ground just very simplified, very suggestive, um, without drawing too much of the, the viewer's attention. So to finish things off, I just add a few more of these highlights and refine some of the edges and the shapes, and then I, I've brought the painting to completion. So here's the final version of the painting. I hope you like it. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I think you know, it captures a lot of the San Francisco character. We have the bay windows, we have the, the distorted perspective of the streets, and we also have um, the water, we have the bay, which is one of my favorite parts of San Francisco. I really liked how this painting has an interesting drama to it because we have the really extreme closeness of the houses that are in the foreground, and then we just have this very distant perspective of houses much further back and and the distant bay so i like that drama of perspective and then we also have the drama of the really interesting lighting that's caused by the cloud covers and then the the golden sunlight um peeking through so i think that also adds to the feeling of of drama in this scene this painting is actually a part of a series that i'm doing called a walk through san francisco for a gallery show in the city that's happening at the end of August. So this is one of 16 paintings for that show. And if you'd like to see the paintings for that show, you can go to my website or check the link that um, I'm putting in this video. 
and you can see all the paintings for that show. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video or if you've done any cityscape painting yourself in the comments below. And as a quick note, this video isn't sponsored by anyone, but if you want to help support my channel, you can purchase my paintings at the link below, or you can join my Patreon, or you can share this video with a friend. All of these things really help. And as always, a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for making these videos happen. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.